Welcome back to another edition of Measure Matters from Google headquarters in Mountain View. I'm Lewis Gray. And I'm Krista Seiden. I'm so excited to have Krista Seiden back with us after one episode away. I was pretty excited to have Breen Baker step in on your behalf. Uh, he did a very excellent job focusing on real-time analytics. I was pretty excited to be on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and we're always excited to have you here to talk analytics. And today we're going to talk about Google Optimize. And as we always do with our Measure Matters series, we do a quick recap of the last event. And we did have Breen, a new guest host, come in to talk about real-time analytics and just what kind of data we ingest and how we show that to our users. We talked briefly about a new nano degree from Udacity focused on Google Analytics, personalization in Optimize, which we're going to talk a little bit about today, mm -hmm. as our big topic is Optimize. And the most requested feature for those who use Data Studio is exporting reports to a PDF. You wouldn't be surprised how excited they were when we finally launched that. So what's new in the world of Google Analytics? I only have a brief update for you today because we have a lot coming. So we're going to start short. And the first piece is enabling links across domains in Tag Manager. For those of you who do use Tag Manager, you know you want to track your campaigns and have specific items to know exactly how the customer came in, what they did when they got there, and how those conversions are measured. Mm -hmm. And now you have that ability to link across multiple domains. So if you have a conversion from a specific page that crosses domains, we'll be able to track that using a first party cookie when they come in using an ad or a promo. Uh, so you can go ahead and measure that capability by clicking enable linking across domains, enter the specific domain values, and the link parameters will be automatically added to the URLs. So that's new. Yep. Real quick, as I said, and we have word on the street it really highlights you guys. Everybody who's out there who talks about Google Analytics, who really wants to offer best practices, we can routinely see through the world of social, through your eyes and your mouth, uh, exactly what you're saying about our product. And really this caught my eye from Joe Martinez of WordStream, who has a, a whole a stream of content really coming out from them right now, uh, really talk about how you can take primary dimensions in Google Analytics, take a look at those affinity categories and other data pieces from your entire corpus of data, and have a good awareness campaign and know exactly what's having an impact. And this avoids what a lot of people have done for a long time, which is spending a lot of money interviewing and asking who those user personas are when you actually have the data already. Mm -hmm. So what he said was, we have Google Analytics, and we can take the data about our current users and convert customers to find new targeting options and test our display and video campaigns. If you have the data, use it. Yep. Speaking of having data and using it, in order to get to that next level in data analytics, you have to understand just what kind of data is coming in. And so Doug Hall did a guest post for Online Behavior, which as you know is Daniel Weisberg, our teammate's site. Mm -hmm. Doug and Hall of ConversionWorks. Doug Hall of ConversionWorks. He got a guest post in on Online Behavior. And he said what you want to do is have an understanding of the value of the data as you collect it. Don't just collect it for collecting sake, but know what you're going to do with it. Know what's the right type of data and make sure you can leverage it so it has value. And so we had a really deep dive, a real solid post going into it and explaining just how you can determine that upfront and what the different places are where you can leverage it and have value. I always learn when I read Doug stuff, so I'm going to have to go read that one. It's, it's long, but it's worth <laughs> it. I went through it, and it was just fascinating. And a little bit more fun, our friend uh, Jeff Sauer uh, from Jeffalytics, you know, he said, how do you choose a Google Analytics goal value? And you know goal values are especially important, because how can you measure? How can you really look at a return on investment or a return on a campaign if you don't know the specific dollar value of any of these pieces? But where do you start if you have incomplete data? This is something that really is a challenge for a lot of marketing people is they can't just throw dollars at it and say this is what's working and we're trying to get a good guess. So he had a really smart explanatory video to have you understand when you're starting from scratch, how do you determine a value in Google Analytics and assign it so that you have the numbers to get good enough data. And so the value might not be perfect, but it's really close. And he put that process together, which I like quite a bit. And anytime you put a meme up there with a scarlet letter, that works. <laughs> so that brings us to today's big topic, Google Optimize. And Krista, the show's yours. Well, Google Optimize is certainly something that we have talked about and touched on before here on Measure Matters. And in fact, episode, what was it, five? Episode Six? five. Five. Uh, we did an entire episode about uh, best practices for optimization. And we touched a little bit on the product there, but most of it was kind of higher level industry best practices and actually practitioner best practices of doing optimization. But we wanted to take a step back today and kind of level set and make sure everybody has a really good understanding of what Google Optimize is, how you can get started with it, how you use it, 
and most importantly, how you can take advantage of it for your own businesses. And so I'm pretty excited to walk through Google Optimize. Um, I know Lewis mentioned that last week they talked about some of the new personalization features. We'll highlight that. Uh, so I guess let's go ahead and dive right in. We've got some slides and then I'm even gonna go into demo towards the end to uh, actually show you how to create a new experience. And I know for many people who are watching, it might be shocking I'm wearing a different shirt than the Google Analytics shirt, but That's we're all right. optimized today. We got the optimized shirt on. Yeah, way to support. All right, so we know that leading marketers are more than two times as likely to employ strategic experiments than the mainstream. Basically, people who are already leaders in this industry have been doing this for quite some time. And if you're not doing this and you want to be a leader, you probably should get going. Sure, this is kind of a chicken and the egg thing. You know, are they leading marketers because they've been experimenting or are they using experiments because they're leading marketers? Either way, there's pretty strong correlation. Totally, and we're gonna show you how to do experiments so that maybe hopefully you can become a leading marketer too. All right, so we have personalized advertising. As marketers, as advertisers, we spend a lot of time developing these ads, making them perfect for exactly the right audience. So here we're looking at a couple of different ads for Dave. Dave is in the market for a vacation, and Casey, who is a monthly business traveler. And they're gonna get very different remarketed ads to go to this travel site based on what we know about them, either that they are looking for some type of vacation or for business travel. And we're gonna send them through this whole ads remarketing cycle, remarketing display ads, specific email, another search ad. And finally, when they click on that ad, we're gonna send them to our website. And what we don't wanna do is after we put in so much time and effort to creating these perfect personalized campaigns by ads, is land them on a generic landing page or you know the same experience for either of these travelers because for at least one of them, it's not necessarily gonna match their intentions. Absolutely, and I think this is really interesting. We talked about this last week, which is that the marketing funnel has changed dramatically, mm -hmm. especially with the rise of mobile. You don't have that easy process where someone comes in and we know that they went A, B, C to a destination. They could have come in and had 100 different touch points before they make a buying decision or maybe even before they inquire into your product. Yep. And so I like the fact in this case, you know, between Casey and Dave, they did have two different experiences before they even got to your website the first time. Yep. So what we want to do is actually give them an improved customer experience. And we can do that with Google Optimize. In this case, we can use Optimize to land them on an appropriate landing page based on the personalized ad campaigns that we've seen beforehand. Um, and this is really, really important to tie together all of that hard work that you've already done in personalizing the ad campaigns when they land into your website. And the way that that looks like is uh, through our AdWords integration with Google Optimize. So we touched on this a little bit in previous episodes, but I just wanted to highlight it here as we're talking about these different ads leading to different landing page experiences, because this is really important here. Um, and the way that this works is within Google Optimize, as you are targeting your experience to a user, to a specific uh, Dave or Casey or type of ad campaign, either a business traveler or a vacation traveler, you can make sure that you're targeting that ad group and those keywords so that when they do land on that landing page, they're getting different experiences based on where they came from, which type of ad or which keyword they came from. So 90% of firms rated their conversion rate optimization programs as valuable or extremely, extremely valuable to achieve their strategic goals. This comes from Forrester. I think this just really underpins how important this is uh, to really invest time and effort into conversion rate optimization, optimization in general, especially when it comes to uh, optimizing from all of this hard marketing efforts that you've already put in on the ad side to those landing pages and further through that funnel on your websites. And this seems fairly self-explanatory. You know, anytime you have something that gives more clarity into your data, absolutely it's valuable. Mm -hmm. It seems remarkable that anybody wouldn't do this now given the option. Uh, this is kind of like that theoretical, you know, four out of five dentists say chew sugar-free gum. Well, who's that other guy who just wants more business? <laughs> uh, in this case, there's 10% of firms who don't see it as valuable. I recommend they try again. Um, yes, I totally agree. And to your point of who, who is not doing this yet, you know, it's not just a matter of necessarily uh, having the know-how within your team or, or being there and being ready, but it's also being able to get started. 
um, and having the right tool in place that is going to be easy enough to get you started in optimization and really help drive value for your business. And that is where Optimize really comes in. So we wanted to show you here that everybody, uh, your total universe of people um, in terms of the internet out there and who you're driving to your sites are coming. We're gonna use Google Analytics in this case to really understand who these audiences are, target them. Then we have our Google ads and our various display efforts coming in place to really be able to target those right audiences with those ads before they even reach our site. And finally, once they get to that site, that's where Optimize 360 or Optimize comes in to customize that experience when they land. And I wanna show you how to actually get started with this. Um, because often when we talk about getting started, we're talking about running your first test, but there's a couple of steps you have to do before we even get to running your first test. And we wanna make sure that you have the groundwork to be able to actually get started with Google Optimize. So our first step is to actually create an Optimize account. You can go to optimize.google.com and you set up a new account and a container. Um, you'll see on the right hand side, there's gonna be this handy little, uh, this handy little, little menu that is gonna walk you through the steps that you need to take to get all of the setup. There's really only one or two that are required um, and you can get going pretty quickly. So once you've selected your relevant Google Analytics account to link to, you're done with this first step. Now this is actually step two, because first you need a GA account. That's true, that is true. You do need a Google Analytics account to get started. Hopefully you already have one of those. If not, you can go to analytics.google.com and create an account there, install that tag on your page to start collecting data, and then you can go ahead and start with our getting started with Optimize process. So next, we need to prepare our sites to use Optimize, just like you would have had to install the Google Analytics tracking code. We also need to install the Optimize tracking code. So you can do this in a number of ways. There are some that we recommend more than others. Um, and there are detailed instructions both within the little pop-up that's gonna come up with the, with the code snippet and in our help center, so be sure to check that out. But basically, you're going to place this snippet directly on your website in the head section of the website. We also have another small snippet attached called a page hiding snippet. We recommend that you put this in there as well and this is going to help avoid any type of flicker. Now you can also implement uh, Google Optimize through Google Tag Manager or a number of other ways. Uh, however, those methods aren't as recommended due to the possibility of flicker and whatnot. So this is our recommended way of implementing to have the best possible user experience for your customers. Absolutely, and if they are just getting started, you might as well go with what's recommended and then you can adjust on the fly after that. Absolutely, and you know, I don't want this to sound uh, difficult or daunting. Really all it is is copying and pasting that line of code into your website and submitting that website to be live. Um, if you can't uh, do this, you can certainly get a developer on your team to be able to help you if you have um, you know, WordPress or some kind of a CMS, they might even have plugins to help with this. Uh, hopefully there's a lot of other articles out there either in our help center or online about how you can implement. Um, it's pretty simple, so hopefully this is, is a step that you can easily go through. So next, and this is optional, uh, you can link to Google Ads. So if you do have a Google Ads account, and you wanna take advantage of a lot of the personalized landing page from ad type campaigns that I mentioned uh, before we got into this step-by-step, -step, then you'll want to set up the link with your Google Ads account. Now you can do this now, or you can do it later uh, when you get to a, an experience where you actually wanna target Google Ads. Um, so take it with a grain of salt, but this is also really, really easy. All you have to do is uh, ensure that the same Google Analytics property is also linked to Google Ads. And in your Google Ads account, all you have to do is flip a switch to enable Google Optimize and link it. It's a one-time setup, and then all of your future experiences can use the targeting for Google Ads. Finally, you're done. You now you get to start improving your customer's journey. This is where you actually get to start using the product. So after you do the first two steps, really, just creating an account and container, and making sure that you link to Google Analytics, uh, you can start creating your personalized site experiences and running Google Optimize on your site. What I find is too often people say, hey, it's really easy or it's simple or it's X number of clicks. But from what I can tell here, most of the people who are paying attention to this show are Google Analytics users. They've mm -hmm. had some experience with Google Ads. They very likely often manage multiple sites. Yep. 
And so in this case, all we're doing is we're adding a little bit of HTML content or JavaScript content yep. in the header of your page. And so if you're familiar with adding that type of content into HTML already, you're really just doing it again. So totally. if you're somebody who knows how to manage a site, you know how to add your analytics code. If you know how to add analytics code, you know how to add optimized code. And we're really just having them all talk to each other so they're saying the same message and making your site better. Exactly. And it really is that easy. There's only a couple steps to actually get started using Optimize. So once we've gone through all this, we reach step four where we can start improving our customers' journeys. Now it is time to create a new experience. So within the editor, you're going to first want to identify what are the things that you actually want to do. Do you want to run an A-B test or a multivariate test or a personalization? Um, and what are the types of things, the things that you want to think about, the types of things you'll want to change for these? Then you want to think about who is going to see these different variations. What is the targeting options that you're going to set? You'll, of course, make your changes within the visual editor. And then finally, you'll go ahead and set that experiment to be live uh, and watch the impact both in the optimized reporting editor and within Google Analytics if you'd like. So pretty simple. I'd like to show you exactly how simple that is. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into demo and create a new experience together. All right, so here I am in Google Optimize. Uh, we're looking at Google Optimize, uh, a container setup for my personal blog. And uh, you can see I have this button on the top right hand corner that says create experience. Now I want to note that this used to say create experiment, I believe. Um, this is a recent change in the terminology to experience because we've added personalization as a type of experience. So when you click this, you're now going to see that you have four options, AB test, multivariate test, redirect test, and a personalization. You give it a name, and you hit create. So I've already done that in this next tab. I'm just gonna go here. Um, I've actually done this in our Google Merchandise Store account. Uh, that way we can actually see what we're gonna do here. For those of you who don't know the Google Merchandise Store, it is a lovely site on, uh, online where you can actually buy Google branded gear. So if you would like a red or green Google t-shirt, you too can go here and purchase one. But no optimized shirts yet. And no optimized shirts yet. If you want Lewis's shirt, you're gonna have to bug him on Twitter for that. Please do. Um, all right, so I've got this all set up. This is the site that I intend to optimize. Let me head back over here. Um, and also just a quick note, the Google Merchandise Store is also our demo account for mm -hmm. Google Analytics. So all of this data is available to you online through the demo account in Google Analytics. And that is the account that we're actually linked to for this test. So the first thing that I want to do now that I have my experience, I've set this as an A-B test, is to create my variant. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Create Variant. I'm gonna name this, uh, let's call it MM Variant 1. MM for Measure Matters, in case that was not clear. I'll hit Done, and my variant is created. But as you can see, I have zero changes. So I'm gonna wanna add my changes uh, that we wanna do here. So I'm just gonna click Right there, it's gonna ask me to save and continue since I've created this variant. I'll go ahead and click yes. And now the editor is gonna load. So it's loading up that Google Merchandise Store website with the optimized editor on top of it. So just a quick walkthrough of this editor. You can see we have a whole bunch of things going on. We have this top bar um, here. It shows me which variant I'm on. I can see my original or my variant. I can also create a new variant from here. I can change how I'm looking at this. So right now I'm looking at it as a standard desktop view, but I can change it to a tablet or a phone or even responsive. Um, I don't have any changes yet. Um, nothing I wanna report, no help that I need. Um, although if I did, I could find it here. And finally, the done button when I'm done creating this variant. Underneath that, there's a few more settings. Um, and as I move my mouse around the screen, you'll notice that different sections are highlighted. So these are actually the areas of the website that are selected as my mouse is on top of that to actually be able to edit. So Lewis, what do we want to personalize or edit here today and experiment with? Let's try buy three shirts, get one free. All right, I like it. So I'm gonna click into where it currently says colorful Google Tees. Um, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say edit text. All right. Let's try Lewis's 
by three T's. Is that how sure. you spell it? <laughs> <laughs> Get one free. I'm not sure that's how you actually uh, advertise t-shirts, but... Well, that's how we're going to do it today. That's how we're doing it today. All right. Going to hit done. We have our shop now button. Maybe I should uh, edit the text there as well and say shop the deal. Get this deal now. Yeah. Get this deal now. I like it. All right. I'm going to hit done one more time. Looks pretty good to me. I like it. Okay, so now we are gonna go ahead and save this variant right up top. Hit done, and that's gonna take us back into our editor. Now, as you can see, we still have our original and our variant. If I wanted to view these, I could go ahead and click on this view icon and I could choose web preview, tablet, mobile, um, or to share this. Uh, we just previewed it though as we were making it, so I'm gonna skip that for now. Uh, and now a couple of really important steps. We need to choose our objective or what it is that we're actually optimizing towards. So Lewis, this is a merchandise store, an e-commerce store. We're trying to sell goods. So I think one of our objectives should probably be checkouts or purchases. Absolutely. So I know that's already in my list. So I'm gonna choose from that list. That list is goals that we have in Google Analytics. Um, purchase completed, that looks like the right one. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. Can also add up to two more additional objectives like add to cart add to cart sounds like a great one let's look for that i don't have your goals memorized so. <laughs> i'm not sure if we actually have that in here fun well let's go ahead and try to create it we'll create a custom one if we have an event called add to cart let's see if we do um so anytime that i have a uh, goal that doesn't exist, but I want to optimize towards that, I can actually create what we call custom objectives um, and use either an event that I know that I'm tracking with Google Analytics or a page view. So I actually do know that we have a cart page view. Um, so maybe I'll use that instead. And then I am just going to go ahead and say that my page has some value for carts. New matches. I, see, now I think it does because it says that it occurred 13 times. We're going to go with that. <laughs> Greater than zero. Greater than zero. All right. We're going to call this add to cart. We're going to say that this can happen once per session. That sounds right. Um, we are validated this rule. We're going to go ahead and save it. And that's going to be my secondary objective. All right, we can add a third, but for the purposes of the demo, don't think it's necessary. Let's move on to targeting. Now, uh, we talked about targeting a little bit earlier, and there's a number of different things that you can do here. So one thing that we'll always need is our URL matches rule. This is uh, saying that the URL matches basically the URL of the store. So this is where we will run this test. But then I can add some additional objectives or some digital targeting rules. And I can target based on any one of these things in here, um, with the exception of Google Analytics audiences. So this one right here is a 360 only feature. You have to be an optimized 360 customer to be able to target on your audiences. Now your audiences are essentially the segments of users that you have within Google Analytics where you've done your analysis and you know that this is a high value audience that you would really like to target. You can share that audience with Google Optimize and then actually target an experience, experience directly to that particular audience. Um, we talked a lot about our Google Ads uh, integration. So if I click on Google Ads, I can choose the account, campaign, ad, or keyword that is equal to um, anything I want. So in this case, I could do like a uh, Google t-shirt or something like that. If I How had ads shirts? set up for that, shirts. It looks like I don't actually have any ads uh, integrated right now. Um, this is where I'd wanna go ahead and add the Google ads integration that we talked about earlier. So we'll go ahead and go back. Um, and in this case, let's actually just target this to geo. Um, so how about my country equals the United States? Because I don't know if I'm allowed to give deals out to other countries. <laughs> All right. So we will go ahead and target this to our users within the United States. 
Um, but as you can see, you can add a number of different targeting rules here from anything from your audiences, if you're a 360 customer, uh, down to individual keywords of ads that you've been running. Right. And I did notice when you put this together, because there are two variants, mm -hmm. each one is set up at 50%. Yes. Now you can set that up so that only 20% get a specific variant or any of that. Yep, I can edit uh, the weighting here. So if I wanted the original to have 20% and the variant to have 80% of the traffic, I could do that here. I could also um, choose the percentage of my total website visitors that will be included in this test. So if I only want 25% of everybody coming to the website to be in this test, perhaps because um, I don't have a lot of confidence in the test or I have just a lot of traffic and I wanna just see how it goes on a smaller percentage, I can change that percentage here either by moving this little wheel or just typing in the percentage that I want right there. I was gonna say as a marketer, when you make that choice, what are the factors that play into it? And as you were totally. mentioning confidence. So depending on your risk level, mm -hmm. you know, if you're happy with where your numbers are but you wanna get it a tiny bit better, maybe you only experiment with five to 10%. Yep. But if you need big changes and you're just getting started, it might be a 50-50. Yep, and what else is gonna play in there is actually uh, the amount of data that it's gonna to take to reach uh, significance or to find a variant that is a winner that's going to beat the baseline. Um, I know when I used to run an optimization program here at Google, uh, we had a significant amount of traffic to our websites and we would generally run uh, per variant maybe 5% of traffic. So if we had five variants in our test, we would use 25% of traffic plus 5% for a control. So 30% of our total traffic. Um, and we would kind of think about it that way, but it would also depend on geography. So if we were running the test in the US, we had a mm -hmm. ton of traffic. If we were running it in Brazil, for example, we had less traffic. Right. And so we would have to use a higher percentage of our overall traffic of the site to make sure that we could get to a place where we would get some confident answers. And we did talk about that in our previous episode yep. on optimization. I remember specifically us looking at the, the way the Japanese websites appeared relative to those here in the United States. Yep. And so for those of you who haven't seen that, go back and watch it when you're done with this show. Yep. Um, but it's always a good call out. Um, it's important to remember, even when we're talking about a specific tool, that there are best practices in general. And as we're building our different experiences within this tool, we should be doing that with industry best practices in mind. So great call out. Um, okay, so now I can go ahead and save my experiment and it's ready to start. Uh, you can see here that it says it's still in draft. If I click start experiment, it's now gonna go ahead and run on the Google Merchandise Store. Now, I didn't actually check with the owners of the website, so I'm not gonna start this experiment quite yet, um, but if I wanted to, I could go ahead and click that. I could also create a schedule to actually schedule this experiment out for a start date and an end date, um, even down to the specific time. If I don't want it to start right now, maybe I want it to start at 12.01 in the morning, that way I can get a full day's worth of data um, in there and I'm not wasting any time on that first day totally feasible with this new functionality. And we did highlight that in one of our previous episodes. We now have that capability to mm -hmm. schedule experiments or even to automatically deploy the winner. Yep. And so over time, as Optimize continues to incrementally improve, you will hear those updates here on Measure Matters. Yep. And that actually brings me to the next thing that I wanted to show, which is deploying a winner. Now, this is actually part of our new personalization feature. So um, I actually have a test here um, newsletter sign application, I think I've got it open, yep. Um, now, this is a test I ran some time back uh, on my personal blog, and I was actually playing with the location of my newsletter sign-up button. I moved it around a few different places, trying to find the optimal place to get the most sign-ups for the newsletter. Um, pretty typical test that you might run. Now, you can see that it says no clear leader was found, um, and that's okay. That's based on my primary objective, which in this case was a goal for newsletter subscriptions. However, I had a secondary objective of relevant searches and a tertiary objective of bounces. And when I actually scroll down and change my primary objective to say bounces, um, I can see that while I didn't have one of my variants um, have a higher probability to be the best, I certainly uh, would have had more bounces on my site if I had deployed either of the different variants that I had had. So while the results for my other, uh, my other objectives didn't look so great, I did get the confidence that my 
uh, original was better than uh, these variants, at least on some objectives. And that's important to measure and to really understand and analyze. And that's why you look at the data. This is one of those scenarios where you don't want to have a hypothesis and then drive toward that at all costs. In this case, you took some experiments, you found your primary objective didn't learn a whole lot, except for there were tiny little changes down at the balance rate level. Yep. But it was good enough to keep it as it was without making major changes. Yep, absolutely. Now, if I did have a winner, um, I would have a option uh, in here to actually deploy the winning variant. So it's a, a little button in here. Uh, since I don't have an official winner on this one, we don't see it. But if I click that, it's now going to create essentially a new test to deploy that winning variant to 100% of your traffic. Um, so a great addition uh, on kind of the personalization and the deployment front to really make this much more actionable. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to show was creating a personalization. So if we come back over here to create experience, and this time I choose personalization, um, and I name this Measure Matters Demo, and I go ahead and create that. Um, this looks a little bit different than our A-B testing setup, but don't be dismayed. It's pretty simple. Um, what we can do is make our site changes or add a targeting rule to uh, this setup. So if I wanted to make a personalization um, that for anybody landing from um, Google search, they might see uh, a different title or different something, I could do that here in the editor. Once I've done that, I could then target that. Uh, if I go back with a targeting rule to say that they had to come from Google search, um, and then I would be able to set this up as a personalization, which means that it's not a certain subset, it's not gonna run as a test, but for anybody coming from Google search, they are gonna see this new experience on my website. And I, you know, we've run into this for years when you have different types of landing pages or different types of campaigns, even to the point where if you're listening to the radio, they give you a specific URL to type in. And usually it's some kind of subdirectory, you know, yeah. christasign.com slash offer, right? And so if you type in this slash offer, it's going to take you to a customized landing page. And now you could run experiments and optimize against that specific source yep. of people who came in. And so on the web, obviously that's multiplied because of the links and the different, many different gateways that can come to your site. But you can run optimize against each one of those different sources and find exactly what works for each audience. Totally. Um, so I, this is also a really great addition to Google Optimize. I know I'm really excited about it. One of the things that we heard over and over was that our A-B test or multivariate test had a 90 day maximum and that you would have to make a copy of that test and start it again to be able to continue to try to target up to 99% of your traffic to, to one experience. Um, and that was really people just trying to create a personalization. So we've taken that out. We've made this um, a, an experience that'll run continuously. There's no 90 day stoppage and you don't have to hack the system to do 99% in one. You can uh, deploy this to 100% of whatever target audience that you want. All right, I think that's all we had uh, on our demo. Very cool. Which brings us to our summary. Yeah, absolutely, so I, I really thank you for diving deep into that. I think a lot of times we talk specifically about each of our products, we drop their names, we explain some of the updates, but it's good to go back to it and see exactly what it looks like from a customer level mm -hmm. and experience it. Yep. And I know that when we do this again in six or nine or 12 months, we'll have a new experience and we continue to work forward. Totally. So, Thank you so much for checking out Measure Matters. Uh, Krista and I have a really good episode coming up in a few weeks. I'm going to try and start that in early November, which is focused on really a showcase of Data Studio reports. There's some we've, really cool ones out we've there. We've talked about these reports. We've talked about Data Studio, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to really go back to the community, and that's you. So if you have interesting Data Studio reports that you've built or you know they've been built, really just ping either of us on Twitter, use the hashtag Measure Matters, and we'll see it. So we're excited to come back in this studio from Mountain View, Google headquarters, and we'll be back for the next edition of Measure Matters. Yep. All right. See you guys next time.